Hello, and welcome to another session of Fortinet Live. I'm Peter Newton, and I'm here today with Jonathan Wendoy, and we're here to talk about the findings of our latest State of Zero Trust report based on a global survey we did with 570 IT decision makers uh, from across the globe. So it's a great survey. I do recommend uh, that if you want to learn more, you can come to our uh, website. We do have that uh, available. But you know, this session is all about Jonathan and I you know, talking about some of the key things that uh, uh, we we uncovered uh, in taking this survey and checking in with uh, other folks, uh, IT decision makers around the world. So, you know, one of the things that you know came out top of the the survey was we saw an interesting strategy, or sorry, an interesting result. And in that when we asked this uh, ran the survey two years ago, we got the result that sixty six percent of people had implemented zero trust and they were well on their path. Strangely, this time when we asked that same question, the number dropped. So it's not that, you know, two years later, we have more people who have completed it. And now they're saying only 54% uh, percent have completed. So, you know, Jonathan, that's kind of a surprising uh, outcome. What are your thoughts on why people are, are seeing that or reporting that they're less complete in their zero yeah. trust strategy? You know, zero trust as, as a concept is, is over a decade old, right? And so it's interesting that we've seen a huge focus on zero trust about five years ago. We've gone up that, that the hype curve, as it were. And I think it's that people realize it's a lot more complex and it's much more than just one product or one idea. And that implementing zero trust in a consistent and indeed a persistent fashion across a really distributed enterprise, it's harder than it looks, right? So I, I think the practical reality is that as people embarked upon trying to implement these zero trust principles, they're finding it's harder to do than what maybe a vendor had suggested in the past, right? And that we're beginning to realize that our operating environments are much more distributed, much more hybrid, and far more complex than ever before. And that zero trust is really a journey, and it's going to be a continuous one. And the reason why it's going to be a continuous one is because our environments, our business requirements, our customer requirements, compliance and operational requirements are constantly changing. And so I think that's one of the truths about cybersecurity is that uh, computing is highly dynamic. It's always changing. And the underlying truth of that is that you need a strategy and you need products and technologies and processes that can be as flexible and adapt to that very hybrid environment. So yeah, I think people are realizing that they're just on a journey, that journey doesn't end. <laughs> Maybe they're just realizing the scope of the map they've got, you know, as they become smart on zero trust, they go, oh yeah, that the one or two projects I did, I just, that's the start. I mean, really the goal post isn't, you know, this second project, it's gonna be much further. You know, and that's the truth about all things cybersecurity. Cybersecurity doesn't end the moment you implement a technology. There's constant tuning, there's a constant upgrading, there's constant training, right? Because the environment's always changing. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, actually that leads into kind of another finding out of the report that said that one of the most challenging things that people were seeing in their implementation of zero trust was the issue around integration. And you know, as they've looked at putting more and more zero trust capabilities into their strategy there, the single biggest thing is 48% indicated a lack of integration yeah. between various zero trust solutions was the number one issue they had, uh, yeah. especially dealing with you know, on-prem uh, deployments and cloud-based deployments. Um, so, you know, what what have you seen in, in your conversations with uh, folks in the field? Yeah, so zero trust solutions are just a microcosm of, of the larger picture in cybersecurity. So this year, Peter, you, you know, Gartner will say we're going to spend one hundred eighty six billion dollars on network security this year. This year, we'll we'll spend more than ever before. We'll have more people than ever before working in cybersecurity, and we still don't have enough people. And yet, despite that, here are the statistics that that frame my understanding. 99% of all the vulnerabilities exploited were known for at least a year. 83% of all the data breaches were caused by simple human error. 43% of all cloud breaches were caused by misconfigurations. And somewhere between only 50% to 72% of all data breach discoveries are all done by third parties, meaning on the scale of 
reactive, blind, reactive, proactive, predictive maturity for security, 70% of the organizations are blind. And so, so the idea that we can take these old strategies of cobbling together multiple vendors on multiple platforms and multiple management consoles and try to implement the philosophy and the principles of, of zero trust security in near real time to deliver really good user experiences, it's we're replicating the complexities of the issue. And so just like platform, platform consolidation and vendor consolidation and a convergence, in fact, Zero Trust and SaaS in all of its iterations really stress the need to converge and to integrate, uh, to reduce complexity. And so if you start off with the idea that we're gonna implement uh, zero trust principles using best in class vendor strategies, best of breed strategies, and try to cobble it all together, you're just replicating the mistakes that got you here. And so I think that's the other realization as well. And you know, as you rattle off those things of you know where breaches are happening, what they're you know what's the openings that are uh, enabling those things to happen, it you know to me I, I look at that and say, well, you know, zero trust is actually designed to minimize all those things to you know really reduce you know who has access to what when when someone does have access they're very constrained and granular in what they get access to the ongoing verifications you talk about the you know misconfigurations or or you know things that you know someone shouldn't have access to given the state of their device you know all of that is being checked in in zero trust and so yeah, as these organizations i guess don't yet have zero trust it, it just talks to the importance of getting there and, and how important it is to have a solution that does work together. So you're not recreating the problems of the past right. with point solutions and complexity, yeah. but you actually have a solution with the convergence of networking security that actually delivers on the yeah. zero trust capabilities that shut down so yeah. many of these attacks. Yeah, otherwise you're still operating in silos, right? That's another theme across cybersecurity is this idea, you know, mesh architectures, for instance, and how they, our architectures reflect our computing, which is very hybrid. It's public, it's private, it's hybrid, it's on-prem, off-prem, on the enterprise edge, right? And so we can't approach security and networking and computing in silos. And, and zero trust solutions and all solutions need to work in an integrated fashion. Otherwise, all you have are degrees of blindness. And so if elements of your zero trust solution are from one vendor and one management console, another one, and they're not integrated, they don't establish the very thing that the adversary does, which is persistence, right? And so, I, you know, it kills me. You can tell I was in threat research for a long time because I know those stats and those are my milestones. That is my barometer for where we are in cybersecurity. When I see those things change, then I know we're beginning, beginning to get it right. So until we work in an integrated platform-based approach that provides unified, uni unified is a right word because you're trying to unify disparate data to have a single source of truth in which you can actually detect and mitigate threats. And you can apply those zero trust principles. And so it killed me that 25 years into my career and 10 plus years after the initiation of zero trust principles and all of the press and focus, we're still making simple intermediate mistakes because we're not applying the technology. No matter how you what, what strategy you utilize, if you don't have technology that actually collects and share information like a Fortinet security fabric, shamelessly, I'll say that then you're setting yourself up for failure. And I think that's what the statistics are really telling us here is that people are realizing that, oh, wow, the, it's, it's a lot harder and we really need to take a different approach about how we implement these strategies. Yeah, noting it, you know, you talk about the importance of having that unified strategy uh, across a hybrid work environment. You know, one of the other things that was, I thought a surprising find um, in the report is the, uh, you know, absolute presence of so many on-prem applications. There's a lot of noise about applications going to the cloud. We're you know, pushing security out to the cloud. But when we looked at, when we asked folks, they said more than 40% have more than half of their applications on-prem. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. let's see, another 30%, I wanna say, um, had between 26 and 50%. So you take that, you know, there's a massive amount of customers, the vast bulk, are dealing in this hybrid world. It's not all cloud. It's yeah. definitely a combination of on-prem and cloud. But yet a lot of the zero trust things, solutions and solutions out there seem to focus on cloud only or cloud first or, you know, what are your thoughts on that? 
So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a paradox, right? Um, we don't operate in silos. The adversaries don't operate in silos. The problems we encounter don't operate in just networking or security or compute. And yet we organize ourselves in silos. Organizationally, platforms and technologies, we operate in a disaggregated way when the problems we have are indeed, you know, differing in form factors, right? And, and so what I begin to see here, in fact, if you look deep into the Gartner original report on SASE, for instance, mm -hmm. somewhere in there, it says this, the underlying challenges of long distance routing and switching are often underappreciated. So the underlying network infrastructure and your ability actually to operate in a hybrid environment are often underappreciated. In fact, one of the biggest issues we have today is this. At the end of the day, what you're trying to enable is a really responsive computing operation for exceptional user experiences, right? And mm -hmm. you have to work at speed and at scale. And, um, and if you dig into the details of that survey, what you're seeing across those respondents is just that, is that it's hard to get networking and security to work together while you're applying these zero trust principles. The idea that you're going to do at scale a posture check for every individual, for every device, for every request for application access, for every session. And you're gonna try to do that across a disaggregated platform of multiple vendors and trying to, to deliver that with consistent performance and exceptional experiences. So you're talking about sub five milliseconds in many cases, right? Mm -hmm. That's hard. And so what's happening now is and often when you also look at, at, at security teams, the average lifespan, for a security operator is about 24 months, give or take three months, whether you're a SOC analyst or a CISO. And so what a lot of these folks are doing is they're inheriting platforms and architectures that other people have been built up and they're just trying to recreate their mess. And you're going to see, you saw that in the latency numbers, right? You know, mm -hmm. the challenge about trying to work across um, broadband, 5G, 4G, MPLS, uh, and you're trying to deliver consistent performance on disaggregate platforms, it leads to issues like latency and latency affects user experiences. Yeah, the, the survey pointed to the fact that uh, the number one issue that folks were having with cloud only solutions that weren't able to take advantage of all those other networking capabilities uh, was latency. Uh, that yeah. was the, the number one issue. And, and we know we've even seen it on uh, customer engagements where People have come to us and said, hey, you know, I'm using this, you know, cloud only provider for my ZTNA, yet my users are having application, uh, you know, access issues. And, you know, the latency as they go to try to open these applications yeah. uh, is just, it's not there. And, and going to a more hybrid solution the way we have that, you know, we can leverage cloud where it makes sense, but we can also leverage on-prem assets uh, to give the, the fastest possible access to those on-prem applications as well as to the cloud-based applications. Right. Because they just right. that excellent user experience that right. ultimately we're trying to deliver with this convergence of, of networking and security. So I find it really ironic that the operators work in a hybrid multi-dimensional environment. Right? So, but at the same time, then they say, oh my gosh, well, if we use just a one form factor, one way of delivering these capabilities, then we have bottlenecks, we discover problems. So the, the, the democratization of technology, the ability to consume what you want, when you want, and only pay for what you're using, and the ability to switch form factors as business requirements begin to change is, is I think one of the underlying lessons here is that when you pick your vendor, whether it's for SASE or ZTN, or whatever involved, the critical aspect is the, the ability to deliver consistent performance irrespective of form factor with flexibility in technology and consumption models and licensing models. And that is how you ultimately deliver success because if computing is constantly changing and it will, it goes through the yin and yang of distributed and centralized computing wherever it makes most sense, right? Then shouldn't your security and network solution have the same level of inherent flexibility? That I think is one of the underlying lessons across the last really 10 years now. I mean, yeah, it has to have that flexibility, that pervasive unified coverage for consistent security everywhere, but also the visibility. So yeah. you have the, the visibility and reporting, you can see what's going on. And for those who are concerned about their you know, compliance, be able to provide the auditors with proof that you are indeed providing that security. You're all locking down across all 
venues in all locations uh, with a consistent uh, policy. Yeah, I always tell folks when they ask, well, how much security do I need? I said, well, you've got to be able to address the known knowns. If you don't know your current state at a high order of confidence, you know, that's 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 where you start off with. Do I really understand what I have today? Well, who my users are? What are they doing? And what's my current? You can't you can't determine what is anomalous unless you know what is normal, right? whether it's mm -hmm. network performance, computing performance or security performance. Yeah. Well, Jonathan, I want to thank you so much for spending some time talking about this. You know, this is obviously a, an area that I feel very passionate about. I think it's important that uh, uh, we share this findings that other people around the globe are also seeing the same type of issues uh, that we're seeing with disaggregate and point solutions. And that really a unified platform is really the way to go when it comes to zero trust. So well, I, I think that's the greatest finding is that zero trust is a journey. It doesn't stop once you begin implementing things and it requires that persistence, right? So I, th I think that's the biggest finding, Peter. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today for this conversation. Uh, you can find our zero trust survey report uh, on our website. So we do welcome you, uh, invite you to go to fortinet.com. Uh, where you can find that and download it. And as well as you can see, uh, we've written up a blog and have a nice press release that hits some of the key highlights from that report. Jonathan, it's been a pleasure as always. Thank you so much.